Hey, this is Solid Snake, and you're listening to Droids Canada. So, pay some damn attention. This is David Faustino. Hello, this is Andrew Chalmers, the writer and doctor in Doctor Who Dark Journey. This is Dr. Steve. Uh, everybody, this is the Governator. This is Inspector Gadget. Hey, what's cracking, y'all? It's your boy J Rock. Good evening, folks. This is James Duval. This is Jeremy Taggart. This is Kim Possible. I'm Chris Holden Reed. Hey, this is Pat Mastriani from Degrassi. <laughs> this is the evil Dr. Bad Vibes. Again, this is Messy Bear. And this is more from X Men. Hey, this is Andrew Gazess. This is Sean Gunn. Hi, this is Robert Carradine. It's Tammy Stronach from The NeverEnding Story. Hey, it's Zach Callison. Hey, I'm DJ Jenny Rock. And I'm Neil Young. I'm Commander Shepard. Ralph Garman here. You're listening to Droids Canada. You've made an excellent choice. You have chosen wisely. Warning. Listener discretion is advised. That means there's a lot of fucking swearing. Hello. <laughs> Hello all, you're listening to Droids Canada, and I'm here with none other than Patricia Somerset, voice of Zelda, among many, many other things. Check out her IMDb. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I am well yourself. Are you enjoying the Calgary Expo? I have really enjoyed this expo. It's definitely one of my favorites, uh, certainly from this year, if not ever. It's been really, really fun. Have you done many of them? I have actually. Um, in the last two years since Zelda's come out, I've been you know, doing multiple per year. I'm pretty busy this year, I have to say, but yeah. <laughs> well, um, speaking of this year, is there an uh, upcoming expo that maybe people can come see you at? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, next week I will be in Dallas for Fan Expo Dallas, and the week, uh, two weeks after that, I'm going to be in Orlando um, for Megacon. Oh, Megacon, I've heard rarely. Very good things. Um, I wish I could get down there. We're from the Niagara region of, Can of Ontario. Um, so we'll be at uh, Fan Expo in Toronto. Will you be at that one? Actually, I believe I will. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, we might run into you again. <laughs> um, so speaking of Zelda, um, it's been a couple of years since you started The Voice, correct? Uh, how have you been finding it? It has been, uh, I would say, an adventure of a lifetime. It's been kind of a... Um, a surreal experience, you know, like this this sort of thing shifts your career in such a big way. And I've been doing this for 10 years before this happened. And uh, since it's happened, I've been traveling, meeting people around the world, specifically related to the Zelda community. And um, uh, it's been incredible. It's been really great. Uh, have you um, been able to do things like uh, image captioning for the character with like dots on your face kind of thing? Or is it just the voice? Yeah, so for Zelda, actually, that was just dubbing, funny enough. Um, uh, some people, some, somebody was saying that I actually look like Zelda, which I find so hilarious. There's absolutely no, uh, nothing with that that I've done with image captioning. But I do do a lot of motion capture for Ubisoft games. So I've done a couple of Assassins, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, a character named Ash. Um, those are all full performance capture with the face and the body with the, the suit. And um, and perhaps some more, but I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> oh, I think there's something coming out then. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say for which company, but yes, there is definitely something coming out. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely have to stay on top of uh, your news feed. Um, do you prefer motion captioning over just dubbing? Oh, that's a good question. They're, they're really very different, and it sort of depends on the project. I love both of those kinds of work. I find they both have very interesting technical challenges that are different. Um, so I can't say I necessarily prefer one over the other, but because I started in theater and I stance before that, I'm, um, I've definitely always really enjoyed using my full body when doing a character. Um, so, yeah, I guess there is something in the performance capture that um, strikes my fancy in a, in a really large way. It feels very complete, the kind of work that it is. I can understand that, the feeling of completeness, you, using your whole body rather than just your voice. Um, uh, also, uh, continuing on Zelda track, <laughs> um, have you played the games? Yeah, I actually, um, I mean, not all of the games, and I've not beaten the games, uh, but um, I did start with The Legend of Zelda, the original, um, when I was a child. I also played a lot of Mario, that was probably our, that was our main thing, uh, in our house we grew up with a NES, and a Super NES. Um, let's see, what else have I played? I guess uh, Ocarina of Time, around high school, and I played some Twilight Princess, and about, I'd say about 35 hours of Breath of the Wild. I'm not sure I'm ever going to beat that game, I have to admit, but... It's a big part of my life already, so it's like almost redundant to be in the world all the time, I have to say. Um, but uh, I really, really enjoy the Zelda games, and I enjoy the sense of humor and the endless imagination that they put into it. It just blows my mind constantly. 
Uh, so would you say it's one of your favorites then? Oh, yes. For, I mean, for many reasons, including my partialness to it. Yeah, I would say it is one of my favorites. Uh, I think it's another favorite that I have. Never Alone, some indie games. Um, I, I obviously really like a lot of the Ubisoft games. Um, I've been playing a bit of Rayman recently, which I really enjoy. I love the way the music syncs up with the, with the gameplay and everything. Um, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, has, uh, have you found that a lot of um, merch, toys, that sort of thing have come out from the game? And have you then started a collection? <laughs> I... I try not to start. I get a lot of gifts at the table, and so I have a beautiful trapper keeper of fan art and stuff that I have, and um, and fridge magnets. People bring me those little um, those little circular things that they melt together, and so I have several fridge magnets with uh, Zelda stuff on them. So somewhat of a collection of pops of my own. I got like some Shira and some you know Red Sonia and stuff like that. That I my other my other fangirl things that I enjoy. Well, that's awesome. Well, you um. You mentioned that uh, people have been comparing your, your look, and there's a picture behind you right now of, of uh, Zelda, and, and I do see, I think I see a, a resemblance, um, but w would you say that you uh, relate most to her, or would you maybe uh, see yourself as a different game character if you could choose? Ooh, that's a good question. If I could be magical, fly around, and be a princess, then I would definitely like to be Zelda. You know, like I, I would like to relate to that. I can relate to a lot of the things just because I've had a lot of time to think about it and, and go in there. I think a lot of people can relate to Zelda because she is so, she is so human. She's you know the, all the the things that go with her, the pressure on her from her family, or the pressure of her to succeed, um, the weight of the world on her shoulders, the hero story that she has, the journey of growing up. All of those things, uh, her, her love of nature, um, those are all things that I relate to um, very personally. So I, I, I'd say I relate to her a lot in terms of, again, I wish I was magical, but aside from that, yeah. yeah. So did you pull real life inspiration to, to find her voice? Of course, I think as an actor, you always, I, because she has such relatable qualities, yes, I did. You always have to come from something that's um, from you. You always bring yourself to a character. And so in that capacity, Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you have a long IMDb page and lots of things you're working on. Is there anything you'd like uh, our listeners to know about that are maybe coming up or your favorite thing in the past? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I've got some fun video game things coming up in, in the new year. Um, but a, a big thing that I'm really proud of that I like to plug might as well, for the fall, we're going to be releasing a second album. My band is. And it's all original music, and we play with an eight-piece. It's sort of folk with uh, bits of jazz and classical. Um, and the band's name is actually Somerset Band. We've shortened it from a longer name, and everybody's just like, just call it Somerset because it's a pretty name, and it doesn't have to be your last name, right? So um, so anyway, you can check that out at somersetband.com, um, and that should be coming up soon. So. That's great. I'm definitely going to look for that. And I, I like the name. I think Somerset is a beautiful last name, yeah, it's, but it's also a great a band name. England. It's a place in England as well, so it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, um, thank you so much for uh, to letting us, letting me interview you. Um, it has been a dream. I'm a big Zelda fan. Um, I'm uh, very nervous talking to you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, thank you so much. Any uh, final words you'd like uh, listeners to know? Um, I, I really love Calgary. Thanks for listening, and thank you for your eloquent questions. I, I know you're nervous, but you sounded extremely poised and ele elegant as far as I was concerned. So. Well, thank you so much. That means a lot. Link, here come to town.